We'll come back to order. I'm looking for the senator it's supposed to be in that seat right there, in the 28th right there. Senator from the 28th, you're up. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm a newbie, so forgive the transgressions there. Mr. President, I ask for unanimous consent that we lift Senate Bill. 215 off the table. All right. The senator has requested unanimous consent to take 215 off the table. Is there objection? Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 215 by Senator Brass of the 28th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 4 of Chapter 18 of Title 50 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to the inspection of public records so as to protect from public disclosure certain personal information of public employees to remove an exemption relating to public disclosure of certain public records. The Senate C Committee on Government Oversight recommends that this bill do pass by substitute respectfully submitted Senator Harbin. The Senate Committee on Government Oversight offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 215, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 4 of Chapter 18 of Title 50 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to inspection of public records so as to protect from public disclosure certain personal information of public employees. That completes the order, Mr. President. Recognize Senator from the 28th. Speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this bill actually may look familiar to some of y'all. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, a couple years ago, I brought down this piece of legis or a similar piece of legislation in this exact same code section, uh, where on lines 31 we added uh, federal employees to the list of government employees that could be uh, have their names removed from public disclosure records, and that's for safety measures. Uh, in my district, we have a lot of federal employees, federal marshals, uh, law enforcement that, uh, that live in our area due to the proximity to the airport. And they've, you know, came to me with this legislation. Well, we passed it, and a couple of counties out there throughout our state are using, uh, they're interpreting it a different way. And so we're coming back and cleaning that up. So simply all we're doing, if you look at, uh, Lines 37, 38, we're adding, we're clearly defining what personally identifiable information is, and we're actually including a spouse as well. So if your spouse is listed as a, as a homeowner or, or a property owner on a, on a public record, like a Q public, uh, where they can be searched online, uh, we're allowing that information to be removed through a through process of just simply filling out a form, and we're giving that county 30 days to do it from the, from that notice. With that, I'll yield for questions. You have no questions, Senator. Thank you. I urge you to vote for this Senate Bill Does 215. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? Chair hears none. Is there objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to the adoption of the committee substitute? Hearing none, the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? Chair hears none. The main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor will vote yay. Opposed, nay. Secretary and the machine.
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 53 and the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. Recognize the uh, senator from the 54th. Yes, Mr. President, I ask for unanimous consent to remove Senate Bill 181 from the table. The senator has asked for unanimous consent to remove Senate Bill 181. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 181 by Senator Payne of the 54th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 25 of Title 50 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated. Relating to the Georgia Technology Authority so as to require such authority to conduct certain fingerprint criminal background checks of all current and prospective employees, contractors, and subcontractors with access to state or federal filed tax documents. The Senate Committee on Science and Technology recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted to Senator Payne of the 54th District Chairman. Mr. President, that completes the order. Is there objection to the Senator from the 54th motion? Chair hearing none, I recognize the, chair, the senator from the 54th. Thank you, Mr. President. Friends, this is just an agency bill for uh, Georgia Technology, Technology Authority. It authorizes GTA to conduct certain fingerprint criminal background checks of all current and prospective employees, contractors, and subcontractors with access to state and federal tax documents. And Mr. President, if there are any questions, I will yield the well. You have no questions, Senator. I ask for your favorable consent. Does any other Senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none. Is there objections to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passes of the bill? Chair is none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? Chair hears none. The main question is ordered. The questions on the passes of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay. Opposed, nay. Secretary, unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 54, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. <laughs> Recognize Senator from the 17th. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to remove Senate Bill 157 from the table. The Senator has asked that Senate Bill 157 be removed from the table. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 157 by Senator Strickland of the 17th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend titles 20, 26, 31, 33, and 43 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to education, food, drugs, and cosmetics, health, insurance, and professions and businesses, respectfully, so as to create a preclearance process in the licensing of individuals with criminal records who make an application to or are investigated by cer certain licensing boards. The Senate Committee on Judiciary recommends that this bill do pass by substitute, respectfully submitted Senator Strickland of the 17th District Chairman. Senate Judiciary offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 157, a bill to be entitled an act to amend titles 20, 26, 31, 33, and 43 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to education, food, drugs, and cosmetics, health insurance, and professions and businesses respectively, so as to create a preclearance process in the licensing of individuals with criminal records who make an application to or are investigated by certain licensing boards. That completes the order, Mr. President. Recognize the Senator from the 17th. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a objection to taking this bill off the table? Chair hearing none. Recognize the senator from the 17th to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I bring you Senate Bill 157. 
83% of people that go to jail in our state will one day get out and come back into society. At the same time, one in seven workers in Georgia hold an occupational license. Those coming out of our criminal justice system are trying to currently navigate a patchwork system where opportunities for employment may exist, but each board looks at criminal records differently. You don't need a statistic to know that the best way to get somebody out of a cycle of crime, out of our criminal justice system, the best way to make sure that it never want to join a gang is to actually have a job. We all know the challenge our state's also currently facing with workforce issues as well. What Senate Bill 157 does is it standardizes how criminal records are considered across all of our occupational licensing boards. It also makes certain that only those offenses directly related to the field being considered are examined and the individuals are only denied licenses when it's shown they pose a safety risk in the area of employment. Third thing it does is it reforms the appeal process to make sure anybody can navigate the appeal process or deny a license. And then to me one of the best parts of the bill is what I call the predetermination part. It allows somebody that wants to go work in a certain industry a chance to go and get predetermination, find out before they go to school, invest time and money to work in a certain area to see if because what's on their record keeps them from working in that area. At the same time, it also requires our boards to now publish on a website what disqualifies you from working in certain industries. And lastly, this allows us to collect data to see how many licenses are being denied in certain areas around our state. Senate Bill 157 is the right thing to do to help strengthen our workforce. It's the right thing to do for those that have shown that they, and that deserve a uh, second chance. It's also the right thing to do for our board members who are trying to navigate how to handle criminal records. And it's the right thing to do for public safety in our state and all those that rely upon the protections that are afforded by our licensing process. And that's why, despite all of our differences we have today and throughout this year, we've seen with this bill groups like the Georgia Justice Project, the Faith and Freedom Coalition, the uh, Frontline Policy Council, Americans for Prosperity, Georgia Chamber of Commerce, uh, Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce and others all come together in supporting this piece of legislation. And with that, Mr. President, I'd be happy to answer any questions. You have one question. Senator from the 19th. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, do you yield? Yes. Senator, how many years have you been in the Senate? I believe this is my sixth year in the Senate. Senator, do you further yield? Yes, sir. Are you aware of the discussions this chamber has had in the past concerning moral turpitude? I'm very well aware of it. Senator, if you don't mind, I want to direct you to line 64 of your bill. Are you aware that on line 64 of your bill, you are striking moral turpitude? Yes, sir. Senator, will you further yield? I will. Are you aware that on line 165 of your bill, you are again striking moral turpitude? Yes, sir. If you keep looking, you'll find it in many places. Senator, I'll just do them all at once. Are you aware then on lines 184, 185, 188, 190, 192, 194, and again on line 376, you are striking moral turpitude? Did you get in the 800s yet? Because no, we got sir. all night, apparently. Yes, we're striking moral turpitude in many places in this law. The truth is, I have been here for six years, and in my time serving in both bodies, I've realized this is something we should do for a long time. But there was one person here that always blocked that. He didn't run for re-election this year. Now was a chance to get this done. Now that we have a senator from the 53rd doesn't care about a lot of these issues. Senator, will you yield for one more question? Yes, sir. Can you define moral turpitude? I cannot, and I won't try. <laughs> That's probably all I had, Mr. President. You're not listening. Senator, you do have a question. Okay. Senator, our, a good mountain man oh, from the 53rd. Should have known. Does the senator yield? Yes, sir. Is it not true that the senator from the Northwest will be voting in favor of this legislation? Uh, I did not know that. Maybe be unanimous now. It is true. Thank you. Appreciate your support. I'm you glad no we got things right in Northwest Georgia. Thank you. you. I yield the well. Senator yielded the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? Chair hears none. Is there objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to the adoption of the committee substitute? Hearing none, the committee substitute is adopted.
Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none. The main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor of the bill vote yay. Oppose nay. Secretary unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 55, the nays are zero. The bill has received the Rexwick constitutional majority and therefore is passed by substitute. I recognize the senator from the 21st. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to take Senate Bill 132 off the table. Senator has asked that Senate Bill 132 be lifted off the table. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 132 by Senator Beecher the 21st and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 2 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to general provisions relative to agriculture so as to prohibit the acquisition of possessory interest in certain land by certain non-resident aliens to provide for definitions to provide for exceptions. The Senate Committee on Veterans, Military Affairs, and Homeland Security recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted Senator Dugan of the 30th District. Senator Dugan of the 30th and Beach of the 21st offered the following amendment, Amendment 1 to amend Senate Bill 132 by Line 19, Strike Country of Particular Concern and insert the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 15, Subtitle A, Part 7, Subpart A, 7.4. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection to the Senator's unanimous re consent request? Chair hears none. I recognize the Senator from the 21st speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, I bring before you Senate Bill 132, and I want to let you know that I am a property rights guy, and I think you should be able to sell your property. Uh, but let me tell you what this bill does. It prohibits the Chinese Communist government from buying our farmland, our land within a 25-mile radius of any of our military bases. And don't forget, folks, agriculture is our number one business. Um, if you look at uh, lines 12 through 15, that describes what farmland is. Then lines 17 through 39 describes a non-resident that is subject of a foreign government that is designated as a country, uh, country of particular concern by the U.S. Secretary of State. There are five countries that are on the U.S. Secretary of State's list of particular concern. The Communist Chinese government, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and Cuba. The reason I bring this bill before you is I think this is a national security issue. In 2010, the Chinese Communist government owned 12,000 acres of U.S. farmland. Today that figure is 268,000 acres with another 2 million acres that we're really not sure who owns. These are figures from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. In closing, the Chinese Communist government is playing a 30-year long game. They want to control our debt, and they want to control our food supply. This is a methodical, long-term plan. The Chinese go uh, Communist government is playing chess, and we're playing checkers. And I don't want them to control our food supply for my kids or grandkids. So I'd ask for your favorable support and consideration of Senate Bill 132, and I support the amendment from the senator from the 30th. Mr. President. If there are no questions, I will yield the well. You, you do have some questions, okay. Senator. Senator from the 29th. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Does the Senator yield? Yes. Senator, is this a governor's bill? Uh, <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Senator from the 37th. 
Does Jim and yield? Yes. Uh, isn't it true that a, that a country that can't feed itself, fuel itself, finance itself, or fight for itself is not truly free? It, you're exactly right. The senator knows of what he speaks, and this is a national security issue, and I want to be sure we're controlling our food supply uh, for our citizens. Thanks for the bill. Recognize Senator from the 20th. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the Senator yield? Yes. My seat, mate. Uh, I appreciate you bringing this bill. It's very important and a serious matter. I want to be sure we get it right. You mentioned several times it's a national security issue, and I just wanted to be sure you had consulted with our Commissioner of Labor on this. <laughs> Well, I have consulted with our Commissioner of Agriculture, and he's for this bill. Um, and I will tell you this, that uh, Senator Tommy Tuberville has a bill very similar to this in the United States Senate because there's a concern uh, in, in Congress about this issue. Recently, the Communist Chinese government bought land in North Dakota right next to one of our missile sites. So it, that's a security issue. Thank you. I support the bill. Thank, Thank you very much. We're going to have a senator from the 7th. Thank you, Mr. President. Does the yes. Senator yield? Yes. Isn't it true that the courts have previously ruled that similar laws that have prohibited certain immigrants from owning property to be unconstitutional? We are not uh, eliminating immigrants from buying property. We are not allowing the Chinese Communist government to buy land. The government itself is buying land at an alarming rate in our country to control our food supply. And so it, it has nothing to do with people Chinese people or, or any other immigrants, it is the Chinese Communist government or any government that is in those five categories. That's who we do not want. We do not want our enemies to own our farmland. Okay. Recognize Senator from the 56. Thank you, Mr. President. Will Senator yield? Yes. Senator, is this your first bill? It is my <laughs> first bill this year. <laughs> So. We hadn't seen you in a while. We were yeah. concerned, uh, Senator, because you weren't at your desk when the president of the body had called your name. Well, last year, some of my bills got put in urban affairs, and I didn't really get anything out. So uh, <laughs> this year, uh, I, I'm in a much better situation. Senator, isn't it true we think you, you're in a much better trajectory now? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. President, I yield the well. Thank you. The senator has yielded. The senator has yielded the well. We, have, uh, we do have an amendment. I recognize the senator from the 30th to speak to the amendment. I wholeheartedly support the, the, the bill that's before us. We just put this one uh, amendment on there to kind of address the concerns of the senator from the 7th. And this is just the specific uh, section, code section within the federal code that the, with the Secretary of State identifies aggressive or belligerent nations that are a threat to the United States. It changes sometimes. It's, it's right now, it's the five he's talking about. Over time, you hope that you have none of them on there because we're all having fun together. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. So as that code gets updated, it will update the measure in this bill without us having to come back and redo it each time. Mr. President, I yield the well. Senator has yielded the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none. Is there objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair here is done. The previous question is ordered. We have here the question is on the adoption of Amendment One. We have one amendment. Is there objection to Amendment One? Chair hearing none. Uh, amendment One is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which is favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? Chair hears none. The main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill as amended. All those in favor of the bill vote yay, oppose nay. Secretary, unlock the machine. Inquiry. Recognize, recognize Senator from 29. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. State Mr. your President, inquiry. Is this not true that this is a senator from the 21st first bill? Senator, I've been around here a long time, uh, Senator from the 29th, I don't know.
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 35, the nays are 20. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed as amended. Senator from the 27th, for what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to excuse the Senator from the 29th for business inside the Capitol. All right, without objection, uh, the Senator is excused. I recognize the Sen Senator from the 28th for a motion. Senator from the 28th, you're having problems today, aren't you? I sure am. I can't count. I can't do nothing. Mr. President, I ask for unanimous consent that we lift SR 176 off the table. The Senator has moved that we lift SR 176 off the table. Is there object? With, uh, excuse me. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Resolution 176 by Senator Brass of the 28th and others, a resolution commending Taiwan for its relations with the United States and the state of Georgia. The Senate Committee on Rules recommends that this resolution do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Brass of the 28th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection to the Senator's motion? Without objection, the Senator is granted his motion. I recognize the Senator to speak to his resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to present to you SR 176, I think. Um, simply commending Taiwan and our great relations that we have with them and uh, just want to continue to grow and foster that. And want to thank my good friend, the Senator from the 33rd, as he is my uh, co-chair of our Taiwan Caucus and want to thank all our great members out there the Taiwan Caucus and, and just all we do to work with them and bring in industry here from the, that great country. With that, I yield the will. Senator from the 5th, would you like to speak to the measure? Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? Chair hears none. Is there objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hear, hearing none, the previous question is ordered. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to adoption of the resolution? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? Chair hears none. The main question is ordered. The question is on the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor of the resolution will vote yay. Opposed, nay. Secretary will unlock the machine. Senator from the 53rd, for what purpose do you rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Is it not true that the color red is the color of the Chinese Communist Party? I believe, I believe you're right about that, Senator. On the adoption resolution, the yeas are 54, the nays are zero. The resolution having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore adopted. I recognize the senator from the 42nd. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to hoist Senate Bill 55 from the table. The senator has moved that we hoist Senate Bill well, 55. I'll, I'll, the secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 55 by Senator Parent of the 42nd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 80 of Title 36 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to general provisions relative to counties, municipal corporations, and other governmental entities so as to prohibit the regulation of businesses of persons under 18 years of age. The Senate Committee on Economic Development and Tourism recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Beach of the 21st District Chairman. Mr. President, that completes the order. 
Is there objection to the senator's motion? Chair hearing none, your motion is granted. I recognize the senator from the 42nd to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, colleagues, until my constituents last summer, um, Tamima and Jack Ganauer came to me and said that they had been operating a fairly so sophisticated lemonade packaging and sale operation during COVID until their parents discovered it was actually illegal and then would not let them do it anymore unless they pulled the requisite permits from DeKalb County, which were gonna cost about 300 to 500 dollars. Well, until the Ganauers approached me, I had no idea that kids' lemonade stands, which I've had my own children run, um, on private property were actually illegal under food health and safety codes unless you pull permits from the local government. And I, as in my official capacity, have been invited to and have stopped by numerous children's lemonade stands. Um, most recently, some, some kids in the district that were raising money for victims of the war in Ukraine. So I thought, you know what? This may not be a huge problem across the whole state, but it actually is a problem. I have placed on your desks two of a number of articles that, that I found where lemonade stands have been shut down by, I would view them as somewhat overzealous uh, local police departments. Um, the ones on your desks are from Midway and, and in Helen. And I also found out that, that other states were beginning to address this same issue. So, um, you know, lemonade stands are a great way for kids to practice entrepreneurial skills and as well as raise money, make money, and have a little bit of fun. And we should all want to kid, teach our children to respect the law. So we don't really want that to tell them that they should operate illegal food business, uh, drink businesses um, because they might, they most likely will not be shut down. It would be better to just let kids, you know, have a stand on private property, respect the law, earn these, the, these dollars, and gain some entrepreneurial skills that will serve them well as adults in the process. So SB 55 is simple. We, we will let kids sell lemonade or any non-alcoholic beverage, prepackaged foods, no foods baked in, their home, in a home kitchen, and then non-consumable goods like t-shirts. I would love to have your favorable vote on this bill for Tamima and Jack Ganauer and all the kids across Georgia who are engaged in this wonderful American tradition. Let's share some lemonade with the kids of Georgia and vote yes on SB 55. Thank you, Mr. President. I will answer any questions. I think you've sold them on the idea, right. Senator. You have no questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I ask for a favorable consideration and I yield the well. Recognize Senator from the OU, you waving, okay. Parliamentary inquiry. The Ashton Ambus consent to excuse the senator from the 19th for business outside. Without of objection, the senator Capitol. from the 19th is excused. He's probably worried about this lemonade vote. Mm. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? Chair hears none. Is there objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Senator from the 47th, what purpose do you rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. I'm curious, Mr. President, is, is everybody drinking the Kool-Aid or the lemonade? Nah. It's getting late in the evening, I can tell. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to the adoption of the committee substitute? Hearing none, the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to the agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? Chair hears none. The main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor of the bill vote yay, opposed nay. Secretary will unlock the machine.
Parliament, the Senator from 56, for what purpose do you rise? Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. State President. Inquiry. Isn't it true we got more done in the last 26 minutes than the eight hours before that? Senator knows what he speaks. On the passes of the bill, the yeas are 52, the nays are 2. This bill, having received the Rexit constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. Man, I tell you what. That's a, that's a tough love household right there. All right. Senator from the 31st, for what purpose do you rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Mr. President, I would wonder if by a show of hands, yeas and nays, to reconsider the last bill. You be, are you being serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wave it off. Okay, we're going to break for dinner. Um, we're going to break for dinner. Pro Tem, once again, has provided dinner for everyone. Uh, we're going to try to re we, – we ran through some bills pretty quickly. I think we'll get through the rest of these bills uh, in, in pretty quick fashion after dinner. So let's break for dinner, come back in about, about 7.30. Thank you. Dinner is in the Secretary of the Senate. You can pick it up right over there. Thank you.